in the lead up to update Groundbreaking, I honestly wasn't very excited. Dozer Blade seemed like a gimmick more than anything, and only a few of the vehicles seemed interesting. After I saw one of the data mines though, my position changed a bit. It uncovered some vehicles that hadn't been announced yet, with one of them being a T26E5. This was simultaneously exciting and worrying. For anyone that doesn't know what a T26E5 is by now, it is essentially a Pershing Jumbo. It's actually in the same class, a salt tank, It was inspired by the Jumbo's success. It doesn't have a fancy new gun or anything, just much thicker frontal armor. This was exciting because I like the Pershing. I think it's a very cool looking tank. So getting a much more well-armored version of that would be pretty neat. However, it was worrying because it's a balancing nightmare. Essentially, the E5 has a very similar armor scheme to the T32, but with a much worse gun and mobility. In fact, the E5 almost made it into a tank that should not be added video. Tanks that only have armor, like the E5, practically never do well. The Sherman Jumbo has armor, mobility, and response time. The B1 Tur has armor, firepower, and decent mobility. In many ways, the E5 is in a similar position to the mouse. It's absolutely destroyed in up tiers, but you can't lower the BR because of its immense armor. At least that's how it would be if the armor was correct. At the time of the data mine, it had completely copy-paste stats from the regular M26, and it was more or less the same on release. Gaijin didn't do this to nerf it, they just hadn't finished working on it, but they pushed it with the update anyway. I don't know if they've ever released an unfinished tank like that before. Only the upper front plate and parts of the turret were correct. Some aspects have been corrected, but there's still some work that needs to be done. As far as what armor the E5 should have, there's been a bit of confusion, so let's take a look at that first. Frontal armor basis for the vehicle was supposed to be 8 inches, or about 203 millimeters. Not every part was that well protected, but the vast majority of the vehicle's surface area met or surpassed that requirement. The upper front plate was 152 millimeters thick, angled at 46 degrees. This gives a relative thickness of 218 millimeters, but that's not what you'll see in game. I'm not really sure why, but even when you're looking at a plate dead on in War Thunder, the impact angle doesn't match up with the construction angle. In order for them to match, you have to look at the vehicle from a very low position. This isn't unique to any given vehicle, it applies to all of them. Just keep that in mind when looking at armor. That being said, the upper front plate is basically correct. The lower front plate is a completely different story. The thickness is correct, but the angling of the plate is way off. It's practically almost flat in War Thunder, being angled at 32 degrees. On the actual vehicle, it's angled at 54. 22 degrees might not seem like a huge difference, but it is. You can see how different it looks when compared to the real vehicle. And one small tangent, I saw some people who thought the E5 was fake for some reason. Yes, it was a real vehicle, and yes, it was actually built. Anyway, the lower front plate being incorrect is sort of a huge issue. That spot should be impervious to anything weaker than a long 88, but even Tiger ones can penetrate it at range. And since the ammo is stored in the lower hull, it is always a one-shot kill. I doubt this will be fixed soon, as model issues take a long time to sort out. I hope it doesn't take years, but given how long it took them to fix the STA turrets, I don't have a ton of confidence. Moving on to the mantlet. Right now it's 177mm thick. It should be much thicker. The figure of 279mm has been thrown around a lot, but that's the maximum thickness, not the average. You'll only get that kind of thickness on a small area. The rest of the shield is a bit thinner, 203mm. They couldn't increase the thickness anymore, otherwise it would block the hatches on the front of the hull. Still, I suspect that penetrating the gun shield will be difficult even for long 88s. The ventilator housing, this thing right here, still has the regular Pershing's values. It's about 162 millimeters, and should be around 242. And finally, the turret armor. The turret armor is cast, and ranges from 190 to 88 millimeters, which appears to be mostly correct. If you want a quick way to see everything that needs to be corrected, here's a quick little graphic by Searchbee. He does a lot of research into American armor, and has made a lot of bug reports to fix the E5, so props to him. Discounting the lower front plate, this only leaves two frontal weak spots, the MG port and the driver's hatches. Once the lower front plate is fixed, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up to 6.7. Honestly, when it comes to where I think it should go, I'm stumped. The fixed armor will make it too strong for Panthers, Tigers, and T-34s, but it's certainly not as good as the Super Pershing, and I prefer the 76 Jumbo over it. The mobility on the thing is just not good. Its turning ability especially is awful, which really hurts it in CQC fights. The turret traverse is also faster than it should be right now, so when that's fixed, it'll have lower response time. The regular Pershing's mobility isn't great either, but it's good enough that you can flank well in up tiers. The E5 doesn't have that luxury, so even without the fixed armor it stomps in down tiers, but is borderline useless in up tiers. The armor fixes won't make it more effective in up tiers, they'll just make it more unbalanced when it faces 5.3s. Simply put, the whole situation is a mess, and I don't see a clear way for this to be balanced. Anyway, I hope that cleared some things up, and I'll see you on the next one.